This is exactly how I would build a mid-range gaming PC if I was trying to keep everything super easy and not have to hunt for a ton of crazy deals. This PC build is definitely gonna appeal to a lot of people as I'm gonna show you each and every part you need for a very capable 800-ish dollar build. But at the end of the video, I'm gonna also show you how you can upgrade it over time or even right now to make it a 1,000 or even a $1,250 build. And real quickly, if you're into these affordable aesthetic builds, then make sure you hit that like button down below. That way the YouTube algorithm knows how you roll. I'm one of those boys that appreciates a fine body regardless of the make. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, and you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now, which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18, and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have windows keys, but also a ton of other stuff such as Office, and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating windows is super simple and only takes like 3 minutes total, so activate Activate windows today and remove that nasty watermark and don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. Jumping straight in the parts list, we'll start with the CPU like normal, and here we're using the latest Intel 13th Gen i3-13100F, and honestly, I'm a little ashamed of myself that I haven't used this sooner in a video. Shame! Now, you may have already seen that the 13100F is only a tad bit faster than the 12100F, and since the previous gen was just such a dominant budget CPU, this 13100F didn't become too popular. And honestly, you can feel free to drop this down to the 12100F to keep things nice and easy. That is 100% perfectly fine. Either way, both the 12 and 13100F are blazing fast CPUs for budget to mid-range builds, and don't let the uninformed internet opinion sway you away from these. I would much rather have these compared to a lot of Ryzen options right now, at least for the price. The one thing you need to be aware of though is if you buy a B660 motherboard with the 13100F, you're either going to have to buy the motherboard with an updated BIOS, which is kind of hard to tell sometimes, or you're going to have to somehow update the BIOS yourself. Again, just to keep things simple, the 12100F would be perfectly fine. And speaking of which, the motherboard I selected was the ASRock B660M Phantom Gaming 4, and I picked this up off Newegg for $110. This is about the average price of a budget B660M motherboard, and it has enough of the features that we need. It's got four RAM slots so we can upgrade it in the future. It supports both 12th and 13th gen CPUs like I said earlier. There's multiple M.2 slots for SSD upgrades and it even has the color scheme that I was looking for. And just as a reminder, a motherboard like this doesn't come with built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth so if you absolutely have to have it, you'll either have to upgrade your motherboard to something like this or you're just gonna have to buy a USB dongle. But again, I'll have links to everything I'm talking about including the upgrade options down in the description. Next up we have the RAM and here I went with a staple of the channel which is the YOLO 2x8 gigabyte 3000 megahertz all white kit which was on a pretty good sale down to $43. The 3000 megahertz RAM speed isn't gonna make too much of a difference in a setup like this, but keep an eye out for all of the different variations of these YOLO white kits because different speeds go on different sales all the time. This 3000 megahertz kit was just the one on sale when I was purchasing parts for this video. And if you can't find this at all, feel free to go with the XBG Gamex D45 or the Corsair Vengeance kit. Both of them have been at some solid prices lately. Next up, we get to the SSD. And just like the RAM, you'll have a lot of wiggle room here. And I simply went with this NeTac 500 gigabyte by NVMe drive because that's what I personally found a really good deal on. Upgrade this to one terabyte right off the bat if you think you need more storage. And remember that the Patriot P310, Team Group MP33, and Crucial P3 are always good budget options to go with as well. After that, we have the power supply. And once again, these are really tricky to find good deals on right now. The most stable deal I've found over the past two months or so has been this Enermax Marble Braun, which is a 550 watt tier C rated unit with all black cables. And it's been sitting on Java for 50 bucks every day of the week. It's really cool that Enermax has been exclusively selling this over on Java for that $50 price point. And unless if you find a really good deal, you're just not going to find any mid-range tier C rated unit at this $50 price range anywhere on the internet right now. And if you don't already know, Java is a great spot to find other deals as well. They have sections for every component type and even completed builds if you want to save the hassle of building yourself. Once again, links to all of this are down in the description. Getting towards the end of our own build here though, we get to the case and shout out to Deepcool for the hookup on this CH370. I don't know why I haven't used this before, but this is an absolutely gorgeous micro ATX all white option that's rocking some pretty neat features. First, there's this very unique front mesh design and that front cover can be adjusted as well. There's a built-in retractable headset holder, plenty of room for extra AIOs and bands, and again, it just looks beautiful. I think I'm in love. 
Now it does come with one black 120 millimeter fan, so you'll need to throw in some extras in the front. I just used some extra fans that I had laying around. And to go along with this aesthetic, Deepcool also sent me their AK400 white CPU cooler, and this was just a perfect match. This is for those of you that want to not only keep your builds nice and chilly, but also for those of you that want the super aesthetic build, but without the RGB nonsense. I love how this looks paired with an all white case, and with the built in black and white contrast of some of these parts, that's all you really need in the aesthetic department. Well, you do need one more thing, and that's obviously some cable extensions. And I use a $20 Easy DIY kit in here per usual. And finally, we get to the GPU. And for an all white build like this, we're definitely a little bit limited on our part selection. But there has been one white mid range GPU that has been consistently available and at a really good price for the past couple of months now. This is the Power Color Hellhound Spectral White RX 6650 XT. And you can usually find this on Amazon for around $330. The 6650 XT in general has been a tier S price to performance card for the past several months now, but these Hellhound Spectral white cards are a cherry on top for not much extra money. Now, do be aware, sometimes this goes out of stock and you won't want to pay the extra buying options price from random third-party retailers. Just be patient and wait until it's back on Amazon Prime and it'll be listed for around the same price point. For some other options, the Asus White RTX 3060 has been at a good price lately. This is the 8GB 3060, mind you. And there's always the white slash silver 3060 12GB Vision card and Zotac has a 3060 12GB as well. And yes, I'm only recommending NVIDIA cards here because there just hasn't been many white AMD GPU options in the last few years. This situation kind of sucks. It was crappy yesterday, it was crappy the day before, and guess what? But with that being said, here's what the full parts list is looking like. And as you can see, this ended up costing me around $800, which is very solid for the performance and aesthetics that we're getting here. I'll show you how it performs in just a second, but I do want to quickly mention that if you want to skip all of this part selection and building that we just did, you can simply just buy our Frost Nova gaming PC, which is always available and in stock on my website. And just worth mentioning real quickly, if you take a look at the Frost Nova PC versus what you can build here yourself for $800, that really shows a standard difference of the value that you're getting between building a PC yourself versus buying a pre-built. There's always gonna be an upcharge when buying a pre-built. So if you only care about price to performance, it's better to build one like this for yourself. And I will have this specific build on our website for the March 1st launch, but per usual, this is gonna sell out extremely quickly. So it's gonna be tough to grab. Moving along here, we'll get to the benchmarks. And I had Sam whip up a massive 20 game benchmarking run again for us and here are the results. As you can see that 13100F and RX 6650 XT is a blazing fast 1080p high to ultra combination, and you can certainly jump into 1440p if you wanted to for some of these titles. But now I do want to cater to those of you that want a PC like this now, but then want to upgrade it in the future, or for those of you that are interested in a video guide like this, but want to just build a more expensive build right now. Thankfully, this part selection was carefully tuned so that upgrading is super easy, and here's exactly how I would do it. Not necessarily the most important, but real quickly just to knock it out, upgrading the storage or RAM would be very self-explanatory and very easy. Our motherboard has an extra M.2 slot, so you can easily just add in an extra drive, perfect for a game or media library outside of the drive that has your operating system on there. And for RAM, it's the same deal. We're currently only using two of the four slots, so just buy the exact same kit again to upgrade it to 32 gigabytes. But now, if you want to upgrade gaming performance, you have some options available as well. The 13100F can handle a much better GPU up to around a 3060 Ti or 3070 level of performance. So if you just want more FPS, you can just upgrade the GPU just like that. Now, if you want a more balanced approach, I recommend upgrading both the CPU and GPU, and some good sweet spots would be the 12 or 13 400F with an RX 6700 XT, or maybe even the RX 6800 XT, which has some crazy value if it's at the right price. Also, remember that these types of upgrades will certainly need an upgrade to the power supply as well, both in terms of wattage, and you should also get a better tier A or tier B unit as well. And if you want a different way to build an all-weight but affordable gaming PC like this, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.